We'll do it live! Hi folks, and welcome to an OA Labs Patreon exclusive tutorial. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about process memory and specifically process memory basics for reverse engineers, what you're going to see in a debugger and how to actually use process memory as an extra tool in your toolkit when you're reverse engineering. Now, if you're seeing this, it's because you're watching this video on YouTube. So just a quick shill for our Patreon. If you like this kind of content, go check it out. I also want to mention that in this tutorial, we're going to be using X64 Debug, which is actually a free open source piece of software that is supported by one main developer. Go check out his sponsor me, GitHub. If you guys like using this debugger, go support him. The more people who sponsor him, the more features that are released for X64 Debug. And I just think it's a nice way to give back for such a quality piece of software. All right, with that, Let's jump in. Okay, so we've opened up our VM here and I have a small example in Visual Studio and I will explain the code and then we'll talk a little bit about interrogating it with the debugger. So what are we doing here? Well, the first thing we do is we get the system info and the reason why we do that is because we want to get the page size and I print out the page size to the screen so we actually know what the size of the page is. Now remember, page size dictates the size of the blocks that memory will be allocated in. Next thing we do is we call virtual alloc and we ask it for 100 bytes of memory. This is committed memory, not reserved, so we actually want to use it. And we want it read-write. And we allow the system to determine where in memory it's going to be allocated. Once we have that buffer, we print out the address where the buffer has been allocated. And then we fill that buffer with 100 A's, ask the ASCII character A. The next thing we do is we ask for a second buffer. Again, 100 bytes in size, committed, read, write. We print that address out to the screen, and then we fill that buffer with Bs, the ASCII character B, 100 of them. So at the end here, we're going to have two buffers of 100 bytes each allocated in memory, and they're going to be filled with Bs. And of course, the last thing we do here is just free them up. So let's run that and I'll show you what it looks like when it's printing those values out to the screen. Okay, so we can see here the page size is gonna be a thousand hex. The first buffer is allocated at one F and four zeros. Next buffer allocated at four zero and four zeros, right? That's all we get out of it. It works fine. Now let's take a look at what's going on under the hood in a debugger. All right, we'll open this up, make the debugger full screen so you guys can see it here. So we've stomped at the system breakpoint what I want to do is just run to the entry point. Now that we've run to the entry point, I'm going to go to symbols. I'm going to look up the symbols for our example here and just go to main. And I'm going to add a breakpoint on main and run till we get to main. Now, if you're unsure why the entry point is not the same as main, we have a tutorial explaining all of that, which I will link below. So now that we're at main, this is where our actual code starts. I have a breakpoint set on free already, just so we can stop the process before the memory is freed. So now our main function is free to run until it gets to the virtual free. All right, so now this is sort of simulating what you might have if you're looking at a malware sample. Let's go ahead and put a breakpoint on NT allocate virtual memory, and we'll see if we can't watch the memory being allocated. So to do that, we can go to symbols, NT DLL in the symbols here, look for NT allocate virtual memory and we can put a breakpoint on it here. Now we can run our program. Once we hit NT allocate virtual memory, we've hit our breakpoint. We need to look at the arguments that are being passed into it. Now remember, the second argument is a pointer to a memory address that will receive the pointer to the allocated memory. So how do we actually look at this in the debugger? Well, let's go to our stack here and this is 32-bit, so the arguments are passed on the stack. The first entry on the stack here is obviously the return address for the caller of this, so we skip over that. The next entry on the stack here is the first argument, so we don't care about that. So that means the third entry on the stack is going to be our pointer to the memory address that's going to receive the address of the memory that's allocated. So how do we observe this? What we want to do is we want to right click on this and we want to do a follow D word in current dump. Follow D word is like a dereferencing of the pointer. So if we do a follow D word in current dump, you can see this memory 
now contains the address of the base pointer that is being sent to this call. So we can see this address here is in little endian and it is 4E0000, right? And it might be easier to see if we turn it into an unsigned integer. You can see here, because it's stored in little endian, we can just flip it around. So it's 4E0000, right? So that's actually the base address where we are expecting the memory to be allocated. Now you might be wondering, why are we getting a memory address passed into anti-allocate virtual memory? When we called virtual alloc, we passed zero into the base address because we didn't care where the memory was allocated. Well, let's continue the execution and we'll see what's filled in here and we'll find out where this memory is actually being allocated. So let's run till return. All right, now we've allocated some memory and you can see this address still remains the same. So that means we've actually allocated some memory at this address. We can follow dword in the next dump. And now this is our freshly newly allocated memory. If we continue running, and this will just run until there's another empty allocate virtual memory, we can see what's actually being written into this memory in between those two calls. We know there has to be another call because in the code we looked at, there's two virtual allocs. So there must be another one. So let's just run until our breakpoint is hit again. All right. Now something interesting has happened here. This is not what we're expecting at all in our memory, right? This is not a whole bunch of A's. What is it? Well, this is a heap outlock. So what we've done is we've observed an allocation of memory that was not our virtual alloc call. It was actually a heap allocation that was being used for other parts of the code, which we didn't discuss. So why don't we look at that code again and figure out where that could have come from. So here's our code, here's our virtual alloc, but before we call virtual alloc, we actually call printf and get system info. So inside one of these calls, we don't know which one, there is uh, some use of the heap. I would assume it's probably inside of printf, but you know, inside one of them, there's some use of the heap. And that use of the heap required the heap to be extended a little bit, which resulted in a call to anti-allocate virtual memory. So the important takeaway here is that because you're watching anti-allocate virtual memory, it is the lowest level allocation call inside your process before you get into the kernel which means that all memory allocations are gonna go through there. So it's gonna be noisy. And by noisy, we mean not all calls to anti-allocate virtual memory are going to be useful for us. And this is a perfect example of it. This call was a call to extend the heap. Now I know this because I've seen this many times before, and I can kind of guess by looking at the information that's in this allocated memory here, that it's the heap. Of course, it's kind of a dead giveaway to have these final paths and stuff in there. In our example, where we have no strings other than the printf ones, strings like this would only really exist in the heap for the process. So that's how come I instantly thought, oh, this is the heap. But there's another way to check this. So what we could do is we could right click and say follow in memory map. Now here is the base address for the memory that we're looking at. Now this base address, of course, doesn't match up with the 4E0000 that we saw being passed into anti-allocate virtual memory. Now the reason for that is, of course, because they were extending this memory allocation, right? So the base address here is not the newly allocated memory, the base address is somewhere above, and the newly allocated memory is just added onto your existing block of memory. Now here's a tip about identifying heaps. So this is coming up in the next module where we talk about heap memory. So I won't get too deep into it, but just know that you can find the address of the heap from looking at the PEB offset of hex 18. So if you guys aren't familiar with the PEB, it stands for process environment block, which has lots of information about the running process. And you can access it in your x64 debug command line, like PEB and then brackets, right? So this tells us that the PEB address is right here. So in our x64 debug command line, we could say read dword 
of peb plus 0x18, and that will give you 4d0000, telling you that this is indeed the heap. Now, I'm going to explain more about that in our next module where we talk about heap memory. But just a little tip for you guys, if you're unsure if you're looking at the heap here, you can always interrogate the peb and see whether it's in fact the heap. And of course, that offset 0x18 is only good for 32-bit systems. On 64-bit systems, I think it's 0x30, but I might be wrong. So anyway, just a quick takeaway. If you want to confirm that you're looking at the heap, you can ask the peb. All right. So now we're at our breakpoint and we have another memory allocation. Let's go back to dump one, which is in our hex view here. And so what we can do is we can say, first argument is the return address. Next one we don't care about. Third entry on the stack is the second argument. Right click, follow D word in dump. And we can see here we're passing null or zero into the base address of empty allocate virtual memory. So that means allocate virtual memory wherever the host sees fit. So let's run to the return of this call and we'll see that we have now a pointer in here and that pointer is the base address of the newly allocated memory. So we can right click, follow D word in the next dump and here we have a freshly newly allocated section of memory. So that's how you watch for allocations using a breakpoint on NT allocate virtual memory. You must first identify the memory address where the base pointer will be stored at the return of the call. You watch that memory address in your dump here. You run to the return of the call, and then you see what address has been populated in that memory address. And that is the address of the newly allocated memory. And of course you can just right click follow D word in whatever dump you want, right? So here's our new page of memory. We can right click follow in memory map, see the size of it. So it's only 1000 hex. I'm assuming this is probably our call to virtual alloc. So why don't we go back to our CPU view and run until we hit our virtual alloc breakpoint again and see what is put into this memory. All right, there we go. So we've hit our breakpoint again. So we're gonna allocate more memory. Let's talk about that in a minute. And in the memory that was just allocated, we can see it's filled with A's now. Okay, so that must have been our first virtual alloc buffer, right? So there's a hundred A's in here. That's the first virtual alloc. So let's take a look at the next memory that's being allocated here. What we can do is again, third on the stack here is the second argument, dump one, right click, follow D word in current dump, zero bytes put in, so you can allocate the memory anywhere you want. Run to return, take a look. One F000 is where the newly allocated memory is. Follow D word in dump three, and let's just run and see what's put into that memory. We can see now we've hit our breakpoint, which was in our main function here on virtual free. So that's the breakpoint that we were originally using. And we can see that this memory has been populated with BBBB, right? So that's our second virtual alloc. Okay, so that wraps up the debugging portion of this tutorial. That is how you use a breakpoint on NT allocate virtual memory to watch memory that's allocated and observe what is placed into that memory. So remember, third on the stack is the second argument, and you have to dereference that by saying follow D word in dump. That's all there is to it. Once you have that down pat, you can watch memory all you want. And don't be tripped up if you see some memory being allocated for the heap. If it doesn't look right, if they're passing a predefined memory address into NT allocate virtual memory, it's probably a heap extension. It doesn't have to be, but it probably is. And you can always check it using the PEB offset. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. And like I mentioned before, if you enjoy this kind of content, go check out our Patreon. Lots more reverse engineering tutorials like this one right there. Go check it out. And until next time, Keep exposing the mechanics behind malware. Like and subscribe. I don't know. Do we still do that? You guys let me know. All right. Bye, guys.